Hi guys! So welcome to our video expose! My name is Beatrice and my name is Kesia. So in this video, we will explain you about multiple intelligence national exam and we will give you 5 tips to learn for national exam. In this video, there will be 5 segments. The first one is about multiple intelligence. The second one is about our multiple intelligence test. And the third and the fourth one is the interview with our classmates and seniors. The fifth segment is about the history of national exam. And the last one is the sixth segment which is the five studying tips for national exam. Enjoy! Multiple intelligences is intelligence that each people has differently and shows a person talent or ability, their strength, and show ways for them to learn more effectively. Howard Gardner, born in July 11, 1943. He is an American developmental psychologist and a professor in Harvard University. Gardner has written hundreds of research articles and 30 books that have been translated into more than 30 languages. He is best known for his theory of multiple intelligences, as outlined in his 1983 book Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences. Naturalistic intelligence refers to the ability to identify and distinguish among different types of plants, animals, and weather formation found in the natural world. Bodily kinesthetic intelligence entails using one's own body to create products and solve problems. Interpersonal intelligence reflects an ability to recognize and understand people's moods, desires, motivations, and intentions. Intrapersonal intelligence refers to people's ability to recognize and assess those same characteristics within themselves. Verbal linguistic intelligence refers to an individual's ability to analyze information and produce work that involves oral and written language, such as speeches, books, and emails. Logical mathematical intelligence describes the ability to develop equations and proofs, make calculations, and solve abstract problems. Visual Spatial Intelligence allows people to comprehend maps and other types of graphical information. Musical Intelligence enables individuals to produce and make meaning of different types of sound. So this is the test result of my multiple intelligence test. My most dominant intelligence is musical intelligence. I think it's true because I like to listen to music very often and I know when someone is singing off key and I know to the beats and tunes to every music. My least dominant intelligence is logical mathematical intelligence. It's true because I'm not good at a subject that is based on logical thinking and mathematical problems. So this is my multiple intelligences test result and according to this chart, my most dominant is mathematical, logical and linguistic. It's probably true because I do enjoy solving puzzles with logics and calculation and I do prefer logic-based or calculation-based school subjects. I also think it's true because I do join a lot of competition and perform 
and present in front of a lot of people. And my least dominant intelligence is interpersonal intelligence because I do prefer being alone and have a me time compared to being in the middle of a crowded place. I study hard in the night before the exam. In my room because it's quiet and peaceful so that I can be focused. I usually study at night because in the evening I have a course and usually I'm so busy in the evening. I prefer studying alone because it, it's more peaceful and it helps me to focus. I prefer being in a silent environment because in a silent environment I can be more focused with the things I am learning. I prefer memory-based school subjects because it's easier for me to learn. No, because our success doesn't rely on school score. Yes, it's important because by studying we can obtain new knowledge that we can use for our future. To me, studying is important because when we were studying, we can learn about things we don't understand. We're studying alone because if I study in a crowded environment, I would be able to focus. But I usually listen to music when I study. I prefer studying alone because if I study in group, I will be talking, chatting, or playing games with my friends instead. I actually study at school. I know it's weird, you know, while most people actually study at home, I study at school because at school they provide extra courses for the preparation for national exams and it actually helped a lot because I get like the tryouts from school for practice. Um, I actually started to prepare for the national exam since November <coughs> because that way I can study in advance and I can be more prepared for the national exam. Uh, calculation for special exam is easier because I love numbers and math and also physics. So I like to learn the night before the exam because it's really, uh, it helps me a lot for memorizing. Studying is important. We need to be smart so we won't get scammed easily and achieve a better life. I think studying is very important. My favorite subject is actually geography because like what my geography teacher said, Geography is actually revolving in our life without us knowing it. For example, um, how do you get water? Which one is plateau? What is the meaning of relief? Which one is urban land use? Which one is rural land use? So I think studying is very important because without studying, you will not know which one is plateau, which one is hills, which one is mountains. What's the difference between hills and mountains? Studying is important besides for knowledge and for your brain, it also helps you for your 
mango. Uh, it teaches you to be diligent and persistent. National exam in Indonesia, which is abbreviated as UN or UNAS, is a student national assessment before the graduation for primary and secondary education. The lessons for UN are usually the typical lessons which are generally studied by all of the students in Indonesia, like math, Bahasa Indonesia, English, and some other science. In 1950 until 1965, the examination was called Ujian Penghabisan. The Ministry of Education, Teaching, and Culture made all the tests into essay. All the students had to write manually their answer to of the test. Because it was essay test, it was need many sheets of paper to answer the question. The national exam in this period was famous as Ujian Negara. The schedule and the place of examination were determined by the central government. The material for the exam was all of the lessons that had been taught at school. The central government during this period arranged the direction of national exam generally. Each school or group of schools did independently the examination which location and schedule had been arranged. They also determined the result of exam by themselves. In this session, the name of examination was abbreviated as EFTANAS or Evaluasi Belajar Tahap Akhir, the last stage of national study evaluation, and EPTA or Evaluasi Belajar Tahap Akhir, the last stage of study evaluation. The central government conducted EFTANAS, meanwhile the local government conducted EPTA. The result of the evaluation was determined from the combination between the result of EPTANAS and the average of EPTA with daily result of the study that was wrote in study report. It was denim the abbreviation of Dr. Nilai EPTANAS Murni, which was taken from original result of EPTANAS. In this era, the name of examination was one, which was the abbreviation of Ujian Akhir Nasional, replaced Iptanas. The standard of the passing grade was significantly changed year by year. In 1-2002, the passing score was determined by each lesson individually. The test for one was made by the DICNAS or the National Department of Education. The school element could not create or even change the mark. The students who didn't pass the exam could have a remedial test a week after one. In 2005 was the time when UAN changed into UN Ujian Nasional with the same regulation in 2004. The passing score raised to 4.25. The students who didn't pass UN Part 1 can join UN Part 2. In 2006, the minimum score must be more than 4.25 for each lesson, with the minimum average score was 4.5. There was no remedial for the student who didn't pass the exam. In 2007, there was no remedial. The students who could not pass the exam should take Ujian Packet ABC to continue the study. If they would not take Packet ABC, they could join UN in the next year. The minimum average score was still the same in 2010. There were five packets for the test. The student in a class could get the different package of the test. It was aimed to minimize cheating among students. The government has developed UN system into CPT, computer-based test. It is not all school could apply the system because the facilitation doesn't support. So they still do UN by PPT, paper-based test system. However, the government is on the way to improve the facilitation for the schools in Indonesia. The first step is to make crossword puzzle so that you can study it and memorize it easily. The second tip is make flashcards for each chapter to make it easier to study anywhere and anytime. The third tip is take extra notes on tougher parts so that you can understand the subject and make it easier for you to memorize it.
The fourth tip is to read the textbook loud and repeatedly so that you can memorize it better. The last tip is to reorganize your class notes so that when you read it, it will not be messy and it will be easy to read. So that's all for our video expose. My name is Petri. My name is Kesia. Thank you for watching and God bless you!